going on everyone? We're out here filming with some of the OGs. We got Mike Rosa from Anabolic Aliens. If you've been subbed for a while, you remember this guy. It's great to connect with him. He connected us with Michelangelo here as well as CJ. He blessed us, letting us in the dungeon here, which is gonna be killer. We're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff, training really hard, so stay tuned. So this was an awesome bonus workout for the week. We already did our five workouts and wanted to switch it up, do an incredible power day with a bunch of different tools. But before that, we needed to get the body right. This is an amazing exercise here. You can see down below in the links, there's also a description of fully how to do it that we've created before. But the biggest thing is we knew we would be doing a lot of benching. So it's about getting the shoulders right, getting that pressing position. Here are some over and backs performed by Mike. You can also start with doing a band if it's easier because I know doing a broomstick can definitely be more challenging. You know, even just once again, knowing we'd be doing a little bit of lower body, an amazing thing you can do is use, an, is use a massage gun, um, a foam roller, or a lacrosse ball if you have access to it. And then even additionally, we had the boys here, we had Mike just performing some crab walks with the band just above the knee with one of those great booty bands here. Activate the glutes, activate the hips, all that great stuff. One of the greatest things you can do for a lower body day. And then additionally, the last thing is just doing some great warm up sets. You can see here, putting a plate on. So we started with 135 going to 225, 315, 405, and worked all the way up to some great weight and had a killer workout. Okay, fitness tip to help you with the deadlifts is if you have a hard time engaging your lats and driving through the feet, you actually have someone help you put a band here with a little bit of resistance, have them lock the lats, drop the butt, and then as they pull in, they'll keep it close to their body, and this will keep the lats engaged the whole time to give you a better deadlift. Bounce, drive, that's good. Man, there we go. Drive, Alright, so my biggest tip is pulling the slack out of the bar. If you pull a limp bar, it's going to shock you. So if I'm not grabbing on this bar and I try to yank it, I'm going to naturally fall forward. Whereas every bar, especially when the weight gets heavier, will have a little bit of whip to it. I can pre-engage in my hamstrings. Bring that chest up, get the lats tight, and then you can power up when it's not a gazillion pounds. <laughs> One of my biggest tips is just get out of your head. And years ago, it was about seven years ago, we met Mike, and I remember just doubting myself and telling myself I couldn't do it. I wasn't able to do it. Oh, oh, oh. And then after multiple attempts of just psyching myself up, I was able to do it. Oh, oh, come on! 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 So even coming in today a lot heavier than I'm used to, if I go in and say I'm going to fail, this is too heavy, I don't have chalk, my hands are going to slip, what's going to happen? I'm going to fail. I came in, I'm going to crush it, I'm with the boys, let's get after it. And especially deadlift, you just rip it off the ground, obviously you want to keep your form tight, but get out of your own head and you'll be able to get stronger within this movement. Let's go! RDLs and... All right, 
right, so when you're deadlifting, you want to use a belt, no matter if the weight is heavy or light, simply for the fact that you want to engage your core and stabilize your spine by filling up the stomach with air. So, for example, if you have an empty soda can and you step on it, you're more likely to crush it, but a full soda can is so hard to crush. So I use the belt to stabilize my spine, come down, pull, and that's a better deadlift. So everybody's anatomy is a little bit different. Everyone has different hip joints. So depending on what feels most comfortable for you, set up your foot position accordingly. So a narrow stance is gonna be one option. You can also go a little bit wider if it feels more comfortable, especially if you're feeling it in your lower back, and do it sumo. You wanna take it an extra step and get even wider, point your toes out, get really low, and then get ready to pull like that. All right, my biggest tip is emphasizing control and power at the same time. I know that sounds impossible or it sounds like it goes against each other, but if you're too focused on slow control reps, you're not gonna have the power to really push through, especially with the chains and to get the benefit there. And if you're just going raw power, you're gonna be all over the place. The chains are gonna be fighting you, really forces you to be tight with your form and emphasize great bar path. So instead, really focus on having a nice clean bar path, come down with control, powering up, but staying in that correct line of bar path so you can get some really good quality reps at a great intensity. My biggest tip for the bench is get a good group of people around you that lift heavier than you. So I got all these fine gentlemen who've been benching more than me. It's been a great time. It's definitely motivating. I've always been benching with Josh who has a significantly bigger bench. So it'll always push you get a good group of people and your bench will skyrocket. I would say one of the most important tips when you're doing a bench press variation that includes chains or any type of stability work that you're setting yourself up the exact same way you would as if you're performing a normal bench press. And the reason you do that is because you're working the stabilizer of the bench press specifically to improve the bench press movement so you want to be replicating the exact same form you do for the normal bench press and that's going to work and improve your stabilizers to get a stronger and more chest focused bench press so you can really optimally use the movement to build your chest and build your power wow you're laughing All right, so we are super fortunate to have access to a prone row today. This machine is awesome because it forces you into a static position. It's a really dedicated row, really make sure you're working the right muscles and taking all the momentum out of the movement. And you might say, I don't have access to this. You've never seen this before. The truth is I've never even had the opportunity to use a specific piece of equipment before myself, but I simulate this in my workouts by doing an incline row on a bench where I'll lean forward into that bench on an incline, pull those dumbbells up, keep that static position of the chest, and take advantage of this fantastic movement at any gym. Oh, baby! And a boy! And my tip here, super simple, remember to breathe. I think a lot of people when they get down to a position where they're laying flat on the ground, on a bench, anything like that, they forget to breathe, right? Because there's so much pressure against their chest. So just remember that, you'll stay alive and you'll get some good momentum going within the movement. tip on the row is to not just focus on the flex part of the row. A lot of people overemphasize the flex and that's all they pay attention to on rowing movements when the reality is they're missing a huge aspect of the row by neglecting the stretch. And the stretch is at that body portion of the row and you want to get a deep stretch of the lats at the bottom. So instead of stopping right here, let your arms come to a full extension and get a deep stretch coming down. You'll activate the full muscle that way and come all the way in and then focus on the flex. 
So all the way out, get a deep stretch, and then all the way in, get a hard flex, and you'll be maximizing every row you do. A great way to tell if the weight that you're using for your rows is too heavy is if you feel it in your traps. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a seal row I'm gonna use for a demonstration. If the weight is too heavy, you're gonna feel it in the upper traps around the neck area, and you're gonna feel it all in that trap. Instead, what I want you to do is bring your elbows towards your back pocket so you feel it in the mid-back and in your lats. All right, so my biggest tip here, you could be really easy to focus on doing one thing than that to be really fixate on the shoulder press, especially if you're like Mike or Savage and you're doing 70s. Instead, it's really important you maximize that squat. You don't cheat yourself here. It's easy to just start doing these and really kind of get into that motion of just rushing through them. Instead, get a nice deep squat, power up, keep that core tight at the top, stay balanced, really focus on winning both parts of this movement. Squat to press is a great exercise when done correctly. Be sure that you're engaging your core, getting really tight on the way down, so that way you can stabilize the spine. So down, tight, explode. Explode, explode. Keep those abs tight. My tip for the push press is to think of it as an overall type of movement to increase your overhead press. That's how I've always done the movement. And the reason is you have leg drive involved with the movement instead of a strict overhead press. So you should be able to handle more weight than doing the strict variation. So as you come down, get all the way down, and then explode up and press all the way up at the top, you'll be more powerful, you'll be able to handle more weight, which will transfer over to you being able to build more muscle doing the overhead press. So my tip here is just really plant your feet to the ground. It's so easy, especially when you start adding in extra things to lift the weight, to start to wobble, you know, have your heels come up, toes come up. Really plant your feet down, keep everything nice and tight. Bada boom, bada bing, you're good to go. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and spending time with us today. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to all the homies here. The links will be down below. And huge shout out to Bougie for allowing us to train in the dungeon today. See you in the next video.